Happy Friday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. It's that time of the afternoon where I'm going to let you know what's happening in the tropics. This is your daily tropical briefing. Of course, we do this every afternoon all the way through the end of hurricane season, which is not until November 30th. So we've got a ways to go. We've made it through the first two months. We're now into the beginning of August, and this is typically where we really start to see things ramp up and get more active out there in the tropics. So we're watching closely for any tropical waves developing, and we're watching that Saharan dust. We're also watching the water temperatures. So we've got a lot that we're monitoring. So let's get right to it. We're looking at the Atlantic and here is the west coast of Africa. You can see we have a couple of tropical waves out there, but over the last day or two, these have kind of gotten a little weaker and they did look a little more impressive a few days ago, but they're kind of running into some of that Saharan dust out there. And that kind of helps to hinder development because that dusty air is dry air and that dry air gets pulled up into the atmosphere and kind of helps to hinder any storm development. So these tropical waves likely will not survive. And that is why the National Hurricane Center does not expect any tropical cyclone development for the Atlantic over the next couple of days. Good news right now, at least for the Caribbean and for the Gulf of Mexico, things are fairly quiet at this point. No major action showing up, no systems of concern that we would think would blow up to possibly become a tropical depression, a tropical storm or hurricane over the next few days. So all is quiet now. Hopefully this continues. It likely will not, but at least for the next few days, we don't have to worry about anything impacting us here locally or anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, as we jump over to the Eastern Pacific and East Central Pacific, that's where things start to get more active. We've got one system right off of the Southwestern Mexican coast that we're monitoring, and it now has a very high shot for development over the next couple of days and over the next seven days. 80% chance for development over the next 48 hours and a 90% chance for development over the next seven days. So it's likely that this will become our next tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane, especially as we go into early next week. Right now, the area of showers and storms just to the west southwest of Acapulco and it is tracking to the northwest so it should stay just off of the Baja Peninsula but we are going to monitor it closely it is moving away from Mexico off to the north and west but we will wait and see exactly what happens because we could get some of those showers and storms kind of brushing the western Mexican coast of course, we also still have Dora, which was a category four major hurricane over the last 24 hours. Now it's kind of gotten a little weaker. It's run into some shear out there. You see it doesn't have that well-defined eye like it did earlier, but it is still a powerful hurricane. It is still a category two hurricane in the East Central Pacific. Let me give you the latest coordinates on Dora. We've got Dora right at 110 miles per hour and it is moving to the west at 18 miles per hour and pressure down to 964 millibars so it is a category 2 hurricane it is still forecast to be a category 2 hurricane by saturday afternoon with 100 mile per hour winds and it should hold together as a category 2 as it starts to push south of the hawaiian island so the good news is that it should stay pretty far south of the hawaiian island so i don't think they'll have any major impacts there so that's great news by wednesday it should be to the south and west of the hawaiian islands but it will be weakening slowly but surely still a category one hurricane but down to 85 mile per hour wind so at this point it's not forecast to make landfall anywhere it's just going to stay out over the open water so that is great news because it is still a pretty powerful system now let's head back over to the Atlantic and we're still tracking that Saharan dust. You can see that it is still coming off of the west coast of Africa, but usually as we go through August, a lot of this dust starts to kind of disperse, fade away. And that is when we are really expecting our hurricane season to get more active. But right now you can see that brown indicating still some of that dust that we're dealing with across much of the Atlantic. So that's kind of hindering that development for now. But once we get rid of that dust, we've got tons of warm water water out here that will help to fuel any of these systems that could get going for the remainder of August and especially into September. Water temps unusually warm well into the 80s, even a 90 degree reading there near the coast, the southern coast of Florida. 
We've got water temps as well, close to 90 for much of the Gulf of Mexico. So basically any system that could get going in the Gulf will likely rapidly develop with all of that fuel out there from that warm water. Also very warm water temps in the Caribbean, middle to upper 80s. So that's our concern. We've got all that warm water out there. We're starting to see some breaks in that dust and we are into typically what is the most active time of our hurricane season. So we are going to be monitoring things closely. We are thinking things will start to pick up very soon. We've already had four named systems so far this season. Arlene, Brett, Cindy, and Don. We had that one unnamed subtropical storm back in January. So we really have had five systems and we do have the potential for several more, especially as we go through the next couple of months. Next name on the list would be Emily and then Franklin and then Gert. Of course, yesterday, the Colorado State University forecasters updated their hurricane season outlook, but the numbers remained unchanged. 18 named storms, nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes. This was the same thing that they forecast at the beginning of July, and that did not change for the August 3rd update. Still forecasting an above normal season. Normally, we would have 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricane so we're still expecting things to get pretty active especially over the next couple of months so we've got august and september to get through and then the first half of october that's really our highest chance to have anything head our way in southeast texas as we get towards the end of october and especially November, our chances are much lower that we would have anything heading here. But just make sure you're prepared because you know these systems can pop up quickly and they could threaten us very fast with a big flood threat, damaging winds, a lot of hazards. So just make sure you're ready just in case that happens. And download our Fox 26 weather app for all of your tropical weather updates, forecast cones, our follow me feature, hurricane watches and warnings, tropical storm watches and warnings. And of course, your local weather can be found on there as well. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Have a great Friday.